The world is a weird and wonderful place. Millions of different species and animals inhabit the Earth, each bringing its quirks and stories. As they say, without diversity, evolution would not exist. A sad truth that may face today is the fact that we live in a world where extinction is a reality for so many species, caused by human interference, climate change, or some other unknown factor. These 20 animals on this list are all the ones we must recognize as extinct. One cannot deny how sad this is, but it also greatly allows us to appreciate our natural history. Now check out these 20 animals who be happy are extinct. Number 20. Plesiosaurus Plesiosaur, any of various long-necked marine reptiles that lived from the late Triassic to the late Cretaceous eras as evidenced by fossils 215 million to 66 million years ago. The plesiosaurs were found all over the oceans of Europe and the Pacific Rim, from Australia to the Americas to Asia. It's estimated that Plesiosaurus, an early plesiosaur, measured about 4.5 meters, 15 feet in length. The animal flew through the water by flapping its fins, similar to how modern sea lion swim. Nostrils were placed behind the eyes. On the back of the head, the animal likely fed by swinging its head from side to side through schools of fish. seizing prey with the help of its long, sharp teeth. The pliosaurs, or pliosauroids, are a branch of the plesiosaurs that evolved a short neck and elongated head, while the plesiosauroids, or plesiosauridea, are a branch of the plesiosaurs that evolved a small head and a long, snake-like neck that was very flexible. Late in their evolutionary timeline, plesiosaurs underwent a period of rapid growth that greatly increased their average body length. Some plesiosaurs, like Elasmosaurus, had as many as 76 vertebrae in their necks. They also grew to a total length of about 13 meters, 43 feet, with the head and neck accounting for about half of that. Maybe it got scared of getting too big and went extinct. Post your thoughts in the comment section. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Brontornis, Terror Bird. Brontornis would have been better suited to ambush techniques against larger animals, while other terror birds could use their speed as a tool to run down prey. To remain unseen by its prey, it would have to wait for it to come within striking distance while hiding among trees and other tall vegetation. Brontornis's bulky physique would have been an asset in the hunt since the creature likely relied on sheer physical strength to bring down its victim. It would have to kill its victim quickly before it had the chance to get away. It would escape if it were not fast enough to catch up with it. A further reason is that it would have to consume larger and more powerful prey items to meet its nutritional needs as a larger bird. Prey that could have survived weaker punches became the focus, so it had to develop the ability to deliver more powerful blows. Anyways, all of its prey can roam free now that it's extinct. Number 18. Sarcosicus Crocodiliform reptiles of the genus Sarcosicus, which is extinct, were alive in the early Cretaceous, about 95 to 115 million years ago. The enormous creature was the world's largest crocodile in recorded history. It inhabited a region that is today a portion of South America and Africa. Modern day crocodiles have a much larger distant relative called Sarcosicus. According to estimations, adult Sarcosicus measured between 29.5 and 31.2 feet in length and weighed 3.5 to 4. 4.3 metric tons, in contrast to contemporary crocodiles which reached their full size at a certain age. Starcosicus grew steadily throughout its life. As a result, they may have weighed more than 10 tons and could grow up to 40 feet long. A large snout on Sarcosicus could make up as much as 75% of its skull length. The overbite revealed some of the crocodile's dental structure since their top jaw was substantially larger than their lower jaws. They possessed 31 teeth on each side of their lower jaw and 35 teeth on each side of their upper jaw. Sarcosicus, like all crocodilians, possessed thick, scaly skin. It used its long, muscular tail and short legs to move quickly through the water. Water. The Sarcosicus is distinguished by the bulla, a huge, broad knob at the tip of its snout. Although experts are unsure of its function, some theories claim it may have helped the creature to better grasp its prey or emit sound frequencies. The crocodile would be happy if Sarcosicus went extinct as its name came up here a lot. Number 17. Archelon Isochros 
Approximately 4,900 pounds of meat made up the Archelon turtle's total mass. It might grow as long as 13.1 feet from beak to tail and as wide as 16 feet across the tips of its flippers. Its appearance was similar to that of a modern sea turtle, but its shell was softer and more leathery. Ripples measuring between 1 and 2 inches in height were supposedly present on its shell. The aquatic creature paddled through the water using powerful forefeet and a hooked beak reminiscent of parrots capable of crushing prey. It's known that Archelon's nested on the beach, but our understanding of their mating and nesting behaviors is still lacking. Like other sea turtles, they would emerge from the ocean at night to bury their eggs in sand. It is speculated that the Archelon extinction occurred near the close of the late Cretaceous Epoch. 66 million years ago, it simply stopped existing. Researchers haven't concluded that the species went extinct due to the consequences of global warming. The western interior seaway, where the turtles often live, has become less warm and more shallow due to these changes. Turtle eggs and hatchlings on the beaches of this sea were also a food source for terrestrial mammals. As the level of predation rose, fewer turtles reached adulthood. What a pity. Everything just went against the mighty turtle. Number 16. Arthropleura According to estimations based on fossil armor pieces, the extinct invertebrate Arthropleura, a relative of centipedes and millipedes, could have grown to more than 2 meters in length during the Carboniferous period, 359.2 million to 299 million years ago, due in part to the higher partial pressure of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere at the time and in part to the lack of large terrestrial vertebrate predators. Arthropleura was able to grow larger than present arthropods. The dorsal surfaces of Arthropleura are covered in tubercules, and the exoskeleton or tergites are arranged in a sequence much like the tergites of a trilobite. The number of trilobite tergites on the Arthropleura is predicted to have been between 28 and 32. Even though we don't know for sure how the legs were attached to the tergites, we don't know what they were probably in a dipolid arrangement, with two sets of legs on each tergum like a modern millipede. It's believed that Arthropleura enjoyed a forest-free existence. However, several fossils of the genus have been recovered after the Carboniferous rainforest collapse. Recent research suggests that its extinction was brought on by combining tetrapod diversity and equatorial drying. Number 15. Bezel Bufo, Ampinga, Devil Frog. It's impossible that Beelzebufo armapinga, sometimes known as the devil frog, is the largest frog that has ever existed. These extinct amphibians about the size of a beach ball reach a maximum length of 16 inches, 41 centimeters, and a maximum weight of about 10 pounds. The late Cretaceous period, some 65 to 70 million years ago, saw their arrival on the island of Madagascar. With their enormous mouths and powerful jaws, ancient devil frogs may have snatched lizards, small animals, and even hatchling dinosaurs. More than a decade after the initial discovery of fossilized bones from the species, scientists announced Bezel Bufa in February 2008. Bezel Bub, Greek for devil, and Bufo, Latin for toad, form the basis of its name. The word Ampinga means armored because the large cranial shield adorned the species' skull. It's a significant puzzle for biogeographers as the closest living relatives of the Bezel Bufo can only be discovered in South America, halfway across the world from its native Madagascar. Most experts believe that Madagascar broke away from Africa and India in around 88 million years ago during the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana, about 160 million years ago. Even as recently as 65 to 70 million years ago, a land connection between South America, Madagascar, and possibly Antarctica may have existed, as suggested by the remains of Diaz Labufo and other Madagascan fossils with South American traits. Number 14. Titanoboa serajonensis. Some experts estimate that this snake might reach a length of 50 feet. Moreover, it could weigh as much as 2,500 pounds, which is more than a ton. It was the world's largest predator from the middle until the end of the Paleocene era. After meat-eating dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago, Titanoboa appeared before the arrival of the Megalodon, a huge 33.5-foot-long shark whose very name means large tooth. Even though scientists have only uncovered fragments of the snake's backbone and skull, they could compute its incredible size and determine that it was indeed a snake. They determined that it belonged to the family of snakes known as Boidae. 
which includes the boa and the anaconda of today. The reign of Titanoboa lasted only a few decades in geological terms until it went extinct, lasting from about 58 to 60 million years ago. Climate change is suspected of playing a role, but scientists aren't certain. As temperatures dropped, huge reptiles like that gigantic snake couldn't keep their metabolism up. Additionally, grassland replaced the rainforest where Titanoboa once ruled. This set the stage for the rise of more diminutive reptiles, which came to dominate the scene. Number 13. Arctoduce, short-faced bear. This huge short-faced animal is an extinct species of bear that belongs to the subfamily, Tremarctini. It's the biggest bear ever recorded and the biggest known carnivorous land animal. Arctodus simos, an ice age mammal that existed between 800,000 and 12,500 years ago, is thought to have descended from Plinonarctos, the earliest known genus of the subfamily, Tremarctini. Although fossils have been discovered all the way to the east coast in Virginia, they have been discovered in significantly greater numbers in the western states, particularly California. Massive examples have been discovered in Alaska and the Yukon. The Arctodus simus, or bulldog bear for its short, broad mouth and had a low forehead and forward-facing eyes that gave it remarkable vision. Standing on all fours, it was 5.5 feet tall at the shoulders, and when it reared up, it was up to 12 feet tall with a reach of nearly 14 feet. The slimmer build of its beast, which could reach weights of 2,000 pounds, belies its size. It could outrun modern brown bears because of its longer limbs, over 40 miles per hour. Arctodus may have gone extinct around 12,000 years ago due to prey decline and competition from smaller species entering North America over the Bering Strait. Around this period, humans in North America substantially refined their hunting tactics, which may have led to the bear's extinction by reducing the available food supply. Would you have loved to meet this bear? Share your reason in the comment section below. Number 12. Dunkleosteus terrelli. Paleontologist David Dunkel coined the term Dunkel's bone to characterize these fossils. The enormous cranial and mandibular bone plates are called osteus in Greek. Dunkleosteus fossils have been discovered in Frisnian and Faminian age rock units of the late Devonian. The Cleveland Shale in northern Ohio is where you'll find the most well-known Dunkleosteus fossils but you won't have to look far to find them. After the Devonian extinction catastrophe, Dunkleosteus and all other placoderms went extinct. The first fossils of the Dunkleosteus were discovered in 1867 by amateur paleontologist Jay Turnell and his son on the cliffs of Sheffield Lake, Ohio, on the shores of Lake Erie. He dubbed that particular fish a terrible fish. The paleontologist David Dunkel was the one to rediscover creature. In recognition of Dunkel and Terrell, the biggest species was dubbed Dunkleosteus terrelli. Dunkleosteus terrelli was the biggest fish in the Devonian, if not the world. In terms of sheer size and power, it could devour anything. Cannibalism has even been uncovered. Many species breathe a sigh of relief that it was extinct. The Dunkleosteus had thick plates of armor covering its head and jaws. Dunkleosteus lacked teeth, as do all placoderms, but its armored jaw plates could be folded into huge sores that would constantly hone themselves. Dunkleosteus has a bite force of 1,000 or 21,000 pounds per square inch. Compare this power to that of giant crocodiles. Number 11. Daedon Shoshonensis During the Oligocene and Miocene periods, the Daedon ruled the Earth nearly 25 million years ago. Bigger and unrelated to current pigs, this beast was a sight to behold. Instead, the Daedon is more closely linked to hippos than to dinosaurs. Around 20 million years ago, the Oligocene and Miocene periods, the Daedon was active. It wasn't linked to modern pigs, although it seemed very similar. Daedon is more closely linked to hippos than dinosaurs. Discover more about these massive, multi-purpose ape-like creatures. Daedon belongs to the order of dinosaurs known as Entelodontidae. Pig-like mammals that existed between 38 and 19 million years ago are collectively known as entelodons. The deodon and other atelodons are extinct. Deodon is classed with Arteodactyla. Their body weight is distributed evenly across their feet, making them even-toed undulates. The Chordata phylum and the Animalia kingdom are where you'll find them, and the Mammalia class is where the animals live. 
Nearly 16 million years ago in the early Miocene, entelodonts were extinct. Increases in temperature at the time caused conditions to become drier than previously. Plant life in the food web shifted in the altered environment. Deodon could eat plant and animal matter, but they could not evolve quickly enough to get it through this period of the Earth's history. Sorry, Deodon, we wish to see you someday. Number 10. Gigantopithecus blackei, the largest ape. New evidence suggests that the world's largest primate may have become extinct due to its massive size and restrictive diet. The Gigantopithecus blackei, a tall, heavy primate related to orangutans, has been shrouded in mystery. It reached heights of up to 10 feet, 3 meters, and weighed as much as 595 pounds, 270 kilograms. But recent research into its food habits suggests it never ventured out of the woods. The massive ape might not have been able to secure sufficient food to survive and reproduce when its forest habitat shrank around 100,000 years ago. In spite of numerous speculations, scientists still knew very little about the enormous beasts lifestyle or the factors that led to its extinction. Due to the size of its molars, some have hypothesized that G. black eye, like giant pandas, existed solely on bamboo. G. black eye's teeth showed signs of wear, consistent with a diet high in fruits, with some leaves and roots thrown in for variety. Gigantopithecus had no choice but to make its home in the woods. Therefore, there is no hope for survival if the forest disappears. It's likely that the forest area shrank and the G. black eye population fell every time the climate became cold Older and drier at different points in the Pleistocene epoch. There were not enough of these massive animals to survive a sudden cold snap around 100,000 years ago. Number 9. Levathan, the giant prehistoric whale. To its biblical namesake, Levathan lived up to expectations, becoming the largest known whale and competing favorably with the Megalodon in weight contest. The Levathan's 10-foot-long skull led paleontologists to estimate that the entire whale was at least 50 feet long and as, as heavy as 50 tons. This would make it roughly the same size as a modern sperm whale. As a result, the Levathan was the largest predatory whale during the Miocene period, roughly 13 million years ago. It likely would have remained at the top of the food chain if not for the even larger larger prehistoric period shark Megalodon. We don't know how long Levathan ruled the seas because there aren't enough fossils to tell, but it's safe to assume that it occasionally ran into the even larger prehistoric shark Megalodon. The exact duration of Levathan's existence after the Miocene epoch is unknown due to a shortage of fossil evidence. A decline in the population of prehistoric seals, dolphins, and other smaller whales likely contributed to the execution of this giant whale at the time because it became extinct. It's no coincidence that the Megalodon, Levathan's sworn enemy, met the same end. Number 8. Hast's Eagle this endemic eagle was the biggest predator when it came to prehistoric New Zealand animals. With a maximum weight of 17.8 kilograms and a wingspan of up to 3 meters, this eagle species holds the record for the largest and heaviest of all eagles known to science. Because of these traits, it dominated the terrestrial ecosystems of prehistoric South Island. Like the more famous moa, Host's eagle is thought to have evolved through and survived several glacial periods when a larger body size would have been advantageous. Only three species of bats were native to the islands of New Zealand before the recent human colonization, which brought rodents and cats. Host's eagles were the top predators, and moa served as grazers to similar to deer or cattle in other ecosystems. Large flightless birds such as all moa species were heavily hunted by early human settlers in New Zealand. The ancestors of the Mori arrived around the year 1280, leading to their extinction by about 1400. Eagles and Maori likely fought over the same food sources. Eagles, in contrast to humans, likely relied heavily on medium to large sized flightless birds for food. During this same period, the Haast eagle went extinct because it no longer had access to its main food source. Maybe we have to conclude here that food is life. Do you agree with this or not? Let us know in the comments section below. Number 7. Megalodon Megalodon fossils that are 20 million years old have been discovered. After dominating the oceans for another 13 million years, the massive shark finally went extinct 3.6 million years ago. Megalodon was one of the largest fish ever to live, let alone the largest shark. It's believed to have reached a length of 15 to 18 meters, making it three times as long as the longest great white shark ever recorded. The Megalodon shark, or O. Megalodon, adapted to living in warm tropical and subtropical climates. Megalodon teeth have been found on all continents besides Antarctica, demonstrating the species' incredible geographic range. They are also commonly seen in the waters off the coasts of Australia and Morocco. 
By the end of the Pliocene, when the Earth entered a global cooling phase, we know that the Megalodon had gone extinct. However, recent discoveries have increased the likelihood that the last Megalodon passed away at least 3.6 million years ago. As temperatures dropped, the number of organisms at the base of the food chain plummeted, which in turn had a domino effect on the top predators, leading to the extinction of as much as a third of all large marine animals, including 43% of turtles and 35% of seabirds. Several factors point to global cooling as a possible cause of the Megalodon's extinction. Maybe it was born to go extinct. What do you think about it, as all odds are against it? Number 6. Mega Piranha a new study shows that the ancient carnivorous Megapiranha, which existed between 6 and 10 million years ago, had a terrifying bite with force up to 50 times its weight. Compared to other mega predators, such as the prehistoric semi truck sized shark known as the Carcharodon Megalodon, the extinct predator wins hands down. When you consider factors other than size, piranhas have become the true winners. In terms of jaw development, they are the undisputed champions. We only have Mega Piranha's teeth to go on, which are from the Premaxilla the upper jaw's most forward region. While modern piranhas are about 40 centimeters long, a comparison of these teeth to those of extinct piranha species suggests that this extinct species could have been as long as a meter. These teeth were serrated and angled in a zigzag line across the front jaw. They were first discovered in 1900 and rediscovered in the 1980s before being formally described as named in 2009. While these teeth may suggest a carnivorous diet, they are more akin to those of Paku, a herbivorous fish of the Colossima genus is closely related to piranhas, the river systems of South America could have supported either diet, further complicating the question of whether mega piranha was a monstrous carnivore or a peaceful herbivore. Common, oversized animals roamed South America during the Miocene Epoch. A few examples would be Purosaurus, the large extinct crocodile, and the Agentavis, the largest known flying bird. Number 5. Helicoprion Helicoprion had a global distribution throughout the Permian period, as evidenced by the widespread presence of its fossils, which have been discovered in America, Australia, Asia, and Europe. Helicoprion is a genus of extinct shark-like eugenodon fish that no longer exists, a group of extinct cartilaginous fishes. The physical characteristic known as tooth whorls is exclusive to members of the Unogenotida order. They first arose in the Diphonium period and lasted until the early Triassic before becoming extinct. The skeletons of Helicoprion, like those of other Chondrichthyan fish, were composed of cartilage. Because of this, unfortunately it's impossible to identify what Helicoprion looked like because of skeleton did not fossilize easily. This makes it difficult to find fossils. Most Helicoprion specimens are tooth whorls that were fossilized and consisted of teeth embedded in a spiraling root. In the 1900s, scientists argued back and forth about the precise location of these tooth whorls on the animal. Others hypothesized that the spiral rested on the upper jaw while others said it rested on the lower jaw, yet others suggested that it rested on the dorsal fin. However, according to the most recent description of fossils with cartilage surrounding the teeth, the spiral teeth are located in the lower jaw. Number 4. Mylodon, Saber-Toothed Cat the extinct Macherodon fields include a genus called a Smilodon. It's the most well-known species of saber-toothed cat and is often considered one of the most well-known extinct mammals. The saber-toothed tiger was not a direct ancestor of the tiger or any other living cat. During the Pleistocene period, Smilodon was prevalent in North and South America. The generic name means scalpel, or two-edged knife, mixed with tooth, and it dates back to 1842 when fossils were discovered in Brazil and the genus was named. Compared to other living cats, Smilodon had a more robust body structure with longer upper canine teeth and longer, more developed forelimbs. Its upper canines were more slender and brittle than those of modern cats because they were adapted for pinpoint hunting. Smilodon was successful in its native North America by preying on huge herbivores like bison and camels, and it continued to do so when it migrated to South America and encountered new prey species. The extinction of Smilodon occurred around the same time that other megafauna in North and South America went extinct roughly 10,000 years ago. The specific reason for its extinction is unknown. However, its dependence on large mammals has been suggested as a possible explanation. Number 3. Pentacoteris decahorensis the legend about the extinct sea scorpion-like Pentacoteris was resembled to a Greek galleon, but was much larger. 
a group of aquatic arthropods including the progenitors of contemporary spiders, lobsters, and ticks. The Eurypterids are the oldest described group of arthropods. Therefore, it's commonly referred to as a sea scorpion informally. The new animals linked to the Eurytids suggest that these early evolved Eurypterids were quite diversified, despite their rarity in the fossil record. This dates back to the origin of Eurypterids back by about 10 million years. Among the arthropods, Pentacoteris is one of the largest known examples, with the longest specimens reaching about 1.7 meters, 5 feet 7 inches. In terms of size, it dwarfs any other Megaloteris family. Megalograptus shilladeri has been said to have grown to a height of 2 meters, 6 feet 7 inches, but the tergites we have so far imply it was no taller than 56 centimeters, 22 inches. The average Pantacoteris would have been between 75 and 100 centimeters in length. Data from boreholes show that the Winneshiek shale is roughly 18 meters thick at the outcrop locality. However, only the top 4 meters were routinely recovered. The vast majority of Pentacoteris fossils were discovered in this 4 meters. In the Decora region, the shale is localized in a basin that is roughly 5.6 kilometers in diameter and was likely formed by a meteorite impact. Number 2. Hallucigenia fortis Hallucigenia is a fossilized extinct animal genus discovered by the Burgess Shale Formation of British Columbia, Canada, and the Middle Cambrian, and in the Lower Cambrian Shale of China from the Early Cambrian. Although it was probably the progenitor of contemporary arthropods, Hallucigenia is a very different form of any other animal still alive. Over 109 examples of these odd aquatic organisms were collected, ranging in size from 0.5 to 3 centimeters. Its body was spherical like a worm's and probably soft to the chuch. Animals that were classified under the same genus were fairly diverse. One of them was completely out of the ordinary. Conway Morris had to develop a new name to replace Canadia because the species wasn't a worm. He named the species Hallucigenia sparsa because of its bizarre and dreamlike character, like a hallucination. Most paleontologists today agree that Hallucigenia, along with Anamalocaris and Opabinia, was a relative of current arthropods, even though Stephen Jay Gould once thought it was unconnected to any living species. The Burgess Shale is also home to lobopods, such as Anamalocaris, Opabinia, and Aishiaea, like all Oncophorans and Aishiaea. It is closely linked to the genus. Another animal called Burgess Oceda was discovered in the Burgess Shale, and it was at first thought to be a new species of Canadida. Upon its initial discovery, it was frequently hung in an inverted position. Number 1. Meganeura Extinct insects belonging to the genus Meganeura resembled and were related to modern-day dragonflies and lived during the Carboniferous Epoch. The M. Monyi butterfly has a wingspan of 65 centimeters, 25.6 inches, to more than 70 centimeters, 28 inches, making it one of the largest flying insect species. Predating on other insects was a staple of Meganeura's diet. In 1880, fossils were uncovered in the Stephanian coal measures at Commentary in France. The French naturalist Charles Brongenard described the fossil in 1885 and gave it the name Meganeura, large-nerved after the intricate venous system and the wings of the extinct insect. In 1979, a remarkably preserved fossil was unearthed in Bolsover, Derbyshire. Meganeurids' massive proportions as compared to their living ancestors seems reasonable. Due to the absence of airborne vertebrate predators, pterygoat insects could reach their maximum sizes during the Carboniferous and Permian periods. This increase in size was likely hastened by the evolutionary arms race between plant-eating Paleodictyopera and Meganesotera. There's a theory that says insects spent part of their development in water became larger once they moved to land so they could better cope with the higher oxygen levels there. Which of these creatures do you feel pity for that it is now extinct? Share your favorite pick in the comment section below.